Hey guys, wanted to put this out. Um, been actually praying about this for a few days because it came about a week ago. Um, and as I was sitting there, I, I'm a scripture guy, you know. I want, I love the scriptures, and I love to put them with it because they kind of to make them all correlate, and you know, everything to fit together, fitly framed. <clears throat> and uh, I said, "Well, Lord, and then, you know, praying about what I was going to say and how this was going to work." And, I don't, so I told Laura, I said, well, I don't really have any scriptures. She said, go to Revelation 12. And he highlighted 1 through 6 and 12 through 16. But really, it's the whole thing. 17 is very relevant, too. But those were highlighted. So there's something to that. I, I, you know, I, That's kind of for you guys to determine. Me, too. I'm going to pray about it. But it talks about the woman, the moon and stars, the dragon comes after, you know, read it, you, you'll get the story. But it's relevant to today. That's what the Lord was dealing with me about. Not just the scriptures, but the message. Do you pray or are you the prey? I'm gonna show you this shirt. At first I thought it was an attitude. You can get them on the internet, and the site is kind of an attitude. It's a political kind of attitude, but anyhow. Hope you can see it. But it says your first mistake was you thought it was one of the sheep. I looked at that. I thought, well, that's a good saying, but I wasn't going to get it. I was like, that's an attitude. It just seemed like an attitude. I got it about six, eight months ago. No, it's not. The line from the tribe of Judah. Because Jesus lives in us, guys. So are we going to pray and seek his will, his purpose for our lives? Or are we going to be the prey? Because right now, look around. Everybody feels like they're the prey. When we need to pray. Because you want direction. You want to change things. Like look at some of my other messages, but one, they're all good. But one virus took out the church, guys. We thought we're this big powerhouse, you know. And we're too busy with the stage and the sensationalism and the Shazam moment. And the, you know, I wave my coat and somebody gets healed. The real miracle, guys, is that person that got healed. Not who did it. Well, who did it? Yes, that, that's the miracle because it was Jesus. The blood of the Lamb. God himself. But the real miracle, they should be the one posting the testimonies. Not some man. Look what I did. If you didn't get it in prayer, guys, that's what I'm telling you. A lot of stuff that, you know, seems hokey because it's not birthed in prayer. Me too. This is not, hey, you got to do this. And I saw this great revelation because it's not a lot of messages that's out there. I hate that. Me I hate that message. I got a secret. I don't know the recipe. It's a secret recipe at KFC, and you don't know it. Nah, 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 boo boo. No, it's in First Peter. There is no secret revelation. Yes, some of us, you know, I was having to deal a lot in the prophetic realm, and I can't change that. But some of y'all are in the prayer realm, different, you know, giving realm. Gifts, all kinds of gifts. I call them mantles. But you're not going to get your direction of the mandate and the mantle that God wants you to wear. The robe of righteousness without praying. That's what my, that's my whole, I'm directional, guys. I'm trying to encourage people. Pray. Pray like never before. I pray all the time, and I'm not, you know, but at 40 years, but there's a lot of times I don't and didn't. And a few things right now that I'm facing because it was what the Lord wanted me to do, and I had the direction. I just got off a little bit because I didn't pray enough about it. I didn't continually bring it before the Lord. Stevie kind of got in the way, and now it's clean up on aisle 13, a little bit of a mess. That's okay. God's grace is sufficient. But we have to pray, guys. 
You want direction from him? You want to hear his voice? You want to hear the wisdom from above? Pray. Don't already have a predetermined plan? You know? Don't pray when... Pray when everything's good. There was this one, one guy I know. He said, I pray when the gas tank was empty and I pray when the gas tank is full. That's actually pretty profound, guys. I've recently been fighting a battle in my health. I was laying in the hospital second time in a year. They wanted to cut off all five of my toes, guys, and I told them no. I said, get rid of the infection first. Because I battled that the year before, and that's what they did. And they did cut off, but only this much. But when you looked at my leg, my whole leg was fire engine cherry red all the way up to my hip. Should have took me out, honestly. Or I had everything cut off. I prayed about it. But I'm but what I'm set my my point is. Don't pray when you need him. You always need him. What we need right now is direction. If he's telling you to stand up and fight, fight. If he's telling you to encourage, encourage. If he's telling you to give, give. If he's tell whatever he's telling you to do, but you're not going to get it listening to me or yourself or your wife or your children or your husband or others or another preacher. That's the beauty of it. That was the whole beauty of Jesus coming. He could live in you, the, the comfort of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost, to lead, guide, and direct you to all truths. And you got a book called the Bible. Open it, pray, ask God. I did that many times. God, I want to see it in the scripture. Now my favorite thing, one of my favorite things to do is, I'll, Jesus, what would you do? Because I don't know. And I did that three years ago, and he told me, he said, I always go to my word. So now I do. But sometimes he'll just give it to me, like he did just this morning when I was praying about this this message. I didn't have scripture. I wasn't going to look. I, guys, I've got some brain freeze issues. That's part of my health problem, but one of them. But... I don't know where these scriptures are, guys. I didn't even know what it kind of did. I mean, I heard that scripture so many times in the Holiness Church for eight years, Pentecostal church, churches for 10. I heard a lot of that. Been in charismatic, denominational, just some kind of the Heinz 57 of the gospel. Pray. We all have to, guys. What's he telling you to do? I'm telling you, the hour, the time we're living in is short. I don't know how long. Everybody's saying that. I haven't heard that for 35 years, though. 40, since I got saved, actually. But you know what it is. Sorry, I'm drinking a little bit of coffee because I got a bro early this morning at four in the morning. To pray, actually. Um Love you guys. Just you want things to change? You want direction in your life? Pray about everything. Where you go to shop, even where if you shop, who you marry, where you live, where you send your kids to school, if you even leave the house, what you say, how it could because it's not going to be. I'm on, that's one of my messages. There's no revival coming, guys. God.